Total Wine and More announces points with a purpose. Now through September 13th, collect five times points on wines and spirits. Points earned equals a matching donation to local charities, up to $2 million in total. Shop with us today or visit TotalWine.com. Terms and conditions apply. Hey readers, welcome to the Shelf Addiction Podcast, and thank you for streaming or downloading today's Shelf Bite episode. If you're new here, Shelf Bites features spoiler-free book and audiobook reviews in just a few minutes. I'm your host, Tamara Ford. If you'd like to chat with me about the book reviewed in this episode, you can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Shelf Addiction. In addition, don't forget that you can always find me both in our Facebook group, Shelf Addiction Official, or on the Patreon page. Speaking of Patreon, if you enjoy this show and would like even more content, please consider becoming a Shelf Addiction Patreon subscriber. You'll gain access to exclusive Patreon-only content, including a monthly live stream, uncut video of the podcast recordings, stickers, t-shirts, and more, depending on your subscription level. Join now by clicking the link in the show notes or go to shelfaddiction.com and click the Support Us tab. Help us make even more bookish content for your ears. If you'd like to show your support in a non-monetary way, please share this episode with bookish friends or on your favorite social media space. So let's jump into it. Today, I am reviewing Vanessa Yu's Magical Paris Tea Shop by Roselle Lem, published August 4th, 2020 by Berkeley Publishing. I received this ebook from the publisher via NetGalley in exchange for Honest Review. For those of you that are unfamiliar with the book, I'm going to start with the Goodreads synopsis. Vanessa Yu never wanted to see people's fortunes or misfortunes in tea leaves. Ever since she can remember, Vanessa Yu has been able to see people's fortunes at the bottom of their teacups. To avoid blurting out their fortunes, she converts to coffee. But somehow, fortunes escape and find a way to complicate her life and the ones of those around her. To add to this plight, her romance life is so non-existent that her parents enlist the services of a matchmaker expert from Shanghai. The day before her matchmaking appointment, Vanessa accidentally sees her own fate, death by traffic accident. She decides that she can't truly live until she can find a way to rid of her uncanny abilities. When her eccentric Aunt Evelyn shows up with a tempting offer to whisk her away, Vanessa says au revoir to America and bonjour to Paris. While working at Evelyn's tea stall in a Parisian antique market, Vanessa performs some matchmaking of her own, attempting to help reconnect her aunt with a lost love. As she learns more about herself and the root of her gifts, she realizes one thing to be true. Knowing one's destiny isn't a curse, but being unable to change it is. First, I'm going to say right off the top, if you know this podcast, you know me even a little bit, then this book is way out of the wheelhouse that I usually talk about here on this show. But I decided to give this book a read because of the magical realism that caught my attention first and foremost. And secondly, because I was looking for a palate cleanser and a good contemporary romance seems to do the trick. And you also know, if you have listened to me on this podcast, that I am a stickler for book descriptions and covers, right? So before I even get into the guts of the story, I want to start with that book description that I just read from Goodreads. I got to say it's kind of misleading. I think the book description probably was written before the final edit because there are some things and I don't want to spoil anything, but there are definitely three distinct sentences that are false that are not right in comparison to what's inside the book. So while I just read that synopsis, it's generally correct. But you'll see if you choose to read it that, you know, some major things that they mention in here are not in line with what's inside the book. So we'll leave that there. As far as the book cover, it's very cute. You know, it's very, very cute. It's like that cartoon cover with um, whimsical writing and you see teacups and teapots. It's super cute. And it does identify with the type of book this is. So while you see this, you think it's going to be light and fluffy and easy. And it is. So that is in line with the book. If I had to also nitpick one more thing, it would be the title of the book. Vanessa Yu's Magical Paris Tea Shop. The tea shop does not belong to Vanessa. It's in her family, but you know, I'm a stickler for these details. 
So this story was told from Vanessa's point of view, although the entire story doesn't revolve around her. It does for the most part, but her family, especially her aunt Evelyn, play major roles in the plot line. I think one of my favorite characters was actually not the main character, Vanessa, but her aunt Evelyn. Aunt Evelyn steals the show every time she's on the page. She's so unique and glamorous and knowledgeable and strong-willed, just like Vanessa is strong-willed as well, kind of why they butt head so much. But she's a refreshing character and works well alongside Vanessa's character. This was a romance, but not your typical one. The story took a bit to set up, but once Vanessa was off to the romantic city of Paris, things really started moving. While the romance was light and sweet, you should know there's barely even a kiss. (laughs) So if you're looking for the characters to hook up or have a hot, heavy romance, look elsewhere. That's not what this is. The heat level of this story was lukewarm, although the blooming relationship was really cute. The hero of the story is interesting. He's an interesting guy. And he's not even, I guess, somebody that I would gravitate to as a perfect hero or a cute hero or somebody that I think would be ideal for Vanessa. But that is actually why I enjoyed it so much because guess what? They are regular people. And as all of these characters are, they come across as regular people in these extraordinary circumstances. And that made it a really fun and indulgent read. Both Vanessa and her aunt Evelyn have the special gift of clairvoyancy. Evelyn masters it and Vanessa evades it. Vanessa caves and has decided to finally learn how to take control of her gift. The ability to read people's fortunes and the matchmaking, which also happens to be a magical gift, are there in the story, but they blend in so well with everything. It's like nothing out of the ordinary is happening. Pay no mind. This is totally business as usual, thus magical realism. And the author does this very well. It blends very well in the story and it just meshes in a way that's easy to digest and easy to understand. And it's just spot on as far as the magical realism. Vanessa is there in Paris first to learn, second to find herself, but both seem to pale a lot against the plot being spent on Parisian food and art excursions and descriptions. It does feel like there's not a lot of action, but there's a lot of movement as far as character development. I enjoyed the story. It really really comes down to the details of those Parisian things, the streets, the art, the food. If you've been there, it will take you back. And if you haven't, you'll want to hop on the first plane. The descriptions of the food, you can tell that the author is a foodie, as is the character Vanessa. If you're a foodie like me, you know these descriptions and you're like, you can visualize and smell and taste and just all these things, especially if you've been to Paris. The author put a lot of love into the food descriptions and it really took me back to eating French pastries at a cafe at a little teeny table looking at people walk by. So that was really fun for me. This book did exactly what I was hoping for. With so much drama in some fiction and in the real world right now, this book really took me to the magical city of Paris, reading about realistic yet adorable romances of more than one couple. From the nosy and aggressive aunties and parents to Vanessa's friends in Paris, all of the characters are fun and enjoyable. I got all of the big family vibes of the Joy Luck Club, you know, the the good parts, not the bad parts, (laughs) with full on young love romance feels with an underlining story of finding yourself and who you want to be and what you want to do. It's entertaining and easy to read, combined in a really cute package. I rate it Vanessa Yu's Magical Paris Tea Shop 4 out of 5 bookmarks. It was really cute and enjoyable. It's the perfect book for an afternoon read on the beach or on your home deck or patio with a glass of rosé in hand along with an exquisite charcuterie board. I think this also will be a fun book for book clubs. It's definitely something to lighten the mood with everything going on in the world and it just transports you to another place. So I definitely recommend this book if you're looking for something that's really light and you know feel good and just really just to cleanse your palate as I said earlier so thanks for tuning in I look forward to speaking with you in the next episode until then happy reading take care everyone 
If you enjoyed today's book chat episode and would like to show your support, there are a few things you can do. Head on over to Apple Podcasts and leave a positive five-star review. You can follow me on Twitter at Shelf Addiction. Most importantly, you can share this podcast with friends and family that enjoy all things bookish, including author interviews. Thank you for listening, and until next time, happy reading. This upcoming school year, teachers are playing a critical role in helping families adjust to the new normal, whether that be in the classroom or at home. We need to support our teachers now more than ever. That's why Clorox is donating $1 million to Clear the List Foundation to help supply the resources teachers need to set their students up for success. Clorox is also offering you a chance to win $5,000 for your back-to-school needs, plus $20,000 for your local school to prepare for the year ahead. To enter, visit Clorox.com. Total Wine and More announces points with a purpose. Now through September 13th, collect five times points on wines and spirits. Points earned equals a matching donation to local charities, up to $2 million in total. Shop with us today or visit TotalWine.com. Terms and conditions apply.